Hello again, everyone. Ken from Whittling Woods, back again for episode two. In our last episode, we covered the basic uh, beginnings of a face, which included the eyes and the nose. And at the end of episode one, we pretty much had this this uh, completed. Um, We didn't develop a mouth, and that's going to be the purpose of this next episode, to, to show a few uh, different ways that you can do a mouth, if you're so inclined. Um, prior to doing this video, I had a piece of scrap one by, it's a uh, pine spruce from one of the big box stores. It's really not the ideal whittling wood, but sometimes just to screw around and get some ideas. Um, you can do some little quick, um, I guess you could call them character sketches. Um, and here's two little quick ones I did. This basically uh, shows the mouth in a very um, st straight line, not frowning, not smiling. Uh, this basically indicating the lips and um, and the approximate location of everything. Um, in, in terms of the features, um, again, you've got your your smile lines, the upper and lower lip. This portion over here, I believe, is called a philtrum. It's a little, if you can kind of see it from this angle, it's a little indentation between your your nose and your upper lip and then uh, down here the area the little indentation between your up uh, between your lower lip and your chin um, I believe that if I'm not mistaken is called a mento labial fold but whatever the case we're, we're just going to call it the little indentation between your between your um, your lower lip and chin. And so those are some of the general landmarks we're going to be uh, working on when we do the when we do the mouth. So again, this is just a, um, a basic uh, basic mouth, pretty straightforward to do. Um, again, this is a good good way to practice when you're doing things. A quick little carving sketches, I, I guess I would call them, where you just take a piece of scrap wood, whatever you have available, and just play around. Uh, it'll get you in the habit of um, of carving and comfortable again using your knife and developing ideas on um, maybe just different ways you can shape the face. Uh, and here you can see I kept the eyebrows pretty much angled around the eye. I changed the face over here to give a little bit of a grin, so it's a bit um, bit of a smile grin and uh, created a, a bit of a, another fold wrinkle in the face over here. Um, the eyebrows kind of angle slightly upward. Again, these are just quick sketches. They're not a lot of detail, but they change some of the basic facial features. And these are some of the things you can play around with uh, to give your characters a little bit more character. And we'll be working on on that in, in this tutorial. If we have time to do two like this, um, m maybe we'll do that. Um, what I'll do with, I'm gonna start pretty much with the same block of wood that we used in the last episode. Uh, maybe I'll do it on the corner like I did these to show you uh, what it would be like carving on the corner. I'm not gonna go th through the details of carving the nose and the eyes uh, again. I'm gonna sketch these, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna carve these. And then when we're ready to do the um, when we're ready to do the the um, the mouth, we'll come back and we'll we'll film that and see how it goes. Uh, I appreciate everyone who commented, liked, and subscribed on the last video. It was very helpful, and uh, it it did fairly well um, in terms of uh, my video performance. So I again I do appreciate everyone who took the time to watch and uh, comment and uh, like and subscribe. It was very helpful. Thank you. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to do a little quick carving on these just to get us ready to do the mouth and then we'll uh, pick up at that point. Alrighty, we'll be, be right back.
Okay, we're back. Um, real quick, I didn't obviously develop the eyes, just got the nose in there, uh, the smile lines, and uh, the beginnings of where we're going to be forming the mouth. So uh, here we go, essentially. Keep in mind that the distance between the bottom of the nose and the chin, uh, if you divide that in half, that's going to be approximately where the lower lip uh, ends. So if this is the bottom of the chin, let me draw with a pencil. If this is the bottom of the chin here, and this is approximately the halfway point, we can expect our lower lip to be in this in this general area here. So when you're dividing up your face, a good habit um, um, of landmark is to establish the lower lip approximately halfway between the nose and where the chin will be. And again, um, the um, the indentation at the bottom uh, between the chin and the and the lower lip, basically the uh, uh, the area that that's, that effectively forms the the lower lip. Um, that's going to be slightly below that halfway point. So when you're making your cut for that, as you'll see coming up, we're going to put that just approximately between the chin and uh, where that halfway point is. So um, let's go. We're going to set the chin here. So let's just do a quick little stop cut. Cut around to it. And we'll go up around the jaw here on both sides just a bit. Again, we're not developing a complete character, complete head. Uh, these are just all, all practice. Okay. Clean some of that up a bit. Now, simplest way that uh, you can do this without, ov without overly complicating it is to put the mark for that indentation, mental labial fold. Uh, we'll, we'll say here's going to be the lower lip, so we want that indentation to be approximately right there again, halfway between the lower lip and the bottom of the chin. So basically, let's a bit of stop cut, cut up to it, cut down to it. Again, you don't have to do it all in one shot. You can take You can increase the size of it as you go. Um, might be easier to gauge where you're at if you do it that way. And pretty much the way I'm doing it right here. So there you go. So now you have basically the, the chin and that indentation below the chin. So now we're going to take the a pencil to mark our line for the uh, split between the upper and lower lip. We're going to go right about here. And we're going to basically just draw a line straight across. Technically, um, from an anatomical standpoint, the mouth, the corner of the mouth, is going to line up pretty much with where the eyes are. So if you have your one eye here, you can expect the corner of the mouth to be just below that, and likewise on, on each side. So essentially, there we are. For, we'll draw that in. Now the deepest part of the mouth is going to be right in the corner from a carving standpoint it's going to be right on right on the uh, the corners of the mouth so we're going to stick our knife in at that point and just press down again these are stop cuts so we're pressing down going to about the midway point with our knife flipping it over and essentially doing the same thing okay now we're going to cut up to that line And then we're going to come. We're going to cut down to it. The way I do it, I sort of angle the knife from the center of the lip to the outside. Flip it over. Do the same thing. So again, it's going to be a stop cut, and then a couple. Um, push cuts kind of up 
stick to it. You can adjust the size of your, your lower lip. If you want it bigger, smaller, however you want it. And we're almost there. The other thing to do is to take your knife. Uh, you're going to find that little the little crease between the the cheek area and where the lower and upper lip meet. Stick your knife right in that that point over here. Press in a little bit, and then take a little slice of wood out over there. All right. It kind of deepens the tuck, makes the uh, makes the lip go back just a bit further. There you go. And uh, let's do the same thing on the other side. Again, put your knife in that, on that corner. And then just basically cut that little chunk of wood right up to it. Just get it out of there. And that's essentially a very basic, very basic mouth. You can kind of go in here if you want, deepen those cuts a little bit more, just to add a little bit more shadow. And wood carving, the shadows can, that's created by creases between um, two planes in a, in a, in a figure, um, add some depth and define those points on, on, the, on your figure. So you can kind of, you can kind of go in and do that. Now for the, uh, filtrum, that little, you know, it goes by a lot of things, uh, Cupid's bow, a couple of things. Uh, I believe it's referred to as the filtrum, a little indentation between the upper lip and the bottom of the nose. It's right in pretty much in the center point over here. So there's a couple ways to go about it. You, if you have a, 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 a some type of gouge, a U gouge, um, maybe like a five or something like that, you can go in and just scoop that out. If you don't have that and you just want to, uh, you know, stick with carving with a knife, if you're maybe someone, uh, sitting on a front porch with a pen knife, pocket knife. Um, that's all you have. That's all, I, that's all you really want to use. That's kind of cool. Just do it that way. I kind of my favorite type of carving. So if you have a knife, make a little cut right in the bottom over there. And then carefully scoop up on one side and then scoop up On the other side and it's pretty small but you can kind of see it created that little indentation by doing that um, it's a simple easy way to do that and sometimes it's all these little um, features that we add to the carving that bring it to life that um, that um, Make it more interesting so to speak another thing to keep in mind and I, I didn't really go over this so much in the in the last video the smile lines uh, do extend up to the uh, Point uh, where the nostril curves into the uh, bridge of the nose area So you can kind of cut those up a little bit higher if you want um, You know, you're gonna have to go in there and kind of move a little bit of wood to Get those up beyond the bottom of the nose um, at a, you know, from a, from a uh, anatomical standpoint, that's that's more correct. So you can kind of cut those up a little bit further, make it um, make it a, approach that little crevice between the the fold of the nostril and the and the bridge of the nose. Uh, same thing on the other side. You know, just kind of go in there, take a bit of wood out, and. 
Get that in there a bit more. All right. So that's generally it. That's that's pretty much the mouth. Um, you're gonna, you know, eventually form the whole head. But um, that's basically a very simple, straightforward way to do the mouth, or at least one style of mouth. Um, not a particularly happy character or expressive character, but um, you know, there it is. Now, I think we have a little time here, and maybe what I'll do is flip the piece around and uh, do essentially the same um, uh, initial steps here, but uh, maybe we'll give the next one a bit of a smile. So um, let me get that prepped up, ready to go, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back again. Um, basically got the face where we're, where we're essentially ready to um, do the mouth. So again, when you're forming uh, the area for the mouth, um, I've heard some carvers refer to it as the mouth mound. Um, you, you're gonna wanna keep it mounted up over here so you can get some depth in the uh, in the lips and, and chin so you know keep that in mind don't carve it don't carve it all the way don't carve it f flat uh, you know under the nose like that you don't want to do that you want to leave some you want to leave some here because the mouth does curve around the the uh, the jaw actually does curve a little bit so you don't it's not flat on the face it's not a line it's there it's actually a curve so you know keep that in mind that you want to have that mounded up on both sides uh, I didn't mention that in the last one but you know it is kind of important so again we're gonna uh, establish where we want our chin let's uh, let's put it right about here and you know that that can vary greatly um, these are fun little figures if you want to do something that's anatomically correct um, you know, with, with details, well, you're going to be using something other than a knife anyway. These are more characters, so you're kind of having fun with it. So you can make the chin bigger, smaller, whatever you want to do, receding, protruding. Uh, there's a lot you can do with that, but uh, we're, we're going to keep it fairly simple here. So anyway, let's, let's call that the bottom of the chin. And we'll just kind of work our way to give ourselves some jaw area to work with and again I, I recommend that you that you practice this way in a piece of scrap bass wood um, like I had before this piece of cheap pine and there's plenty of stuff we always have if you if you are into this hobby you're always going to have lots of lots of cutoffs and scrap you can do it on pretty much anything it's a it's just a it's a good way to to practice and to uh, work out ideas uh, for carvings that you that, uh, that you plan on doing so uh, you know, not most basically like anything it, you know you practice and you practice and you practice and eventually you get pretty good at it um, I'm still working there myself one day uh, well I'll always be practicing. That's you always learn. You always practice. You never you never stop. Um, okay, again, 
we're looking at the halfway point between the nose, the bottom of the nose, and the mouth for the lower lip. So the lower lip's going to be in this general vicinity right here. So the little indentation, you know, will stick somewhere over there. It's sort of halfway between the chin and the lower lip. So um, lower lip here. So let's just make that. Again, we're just going to put a, uh, a stop cut in there. I wouldn't go too deep initially because you, you know you might want to change it. You might you might decide that um, you, you know the 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 look uh, you want a slightly different look. It's you know with wood carving, it's a subtractive uh, form of sculpturing. You're you're taking away things. It's not like clay where you can you know you you can add more if you if you don't like what you did. Once you take it off, you, you know you're, you, it doesn't come back. So. Um, Sometimes if you're not exactly sure how you're going to uh, work a certain part, start small. Take little nibbles away and, um, and then um, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so we got that line in there. Let's, uh, let's look at our mouth. Let's try to get a smile in here. So we're going to basically curve it around like this. Okay. So again, we're going to do the same thing we did last time. We're going to put the knife in at the corner, stick it in there kind of deep, rock it a little bit, get it down in there, turn it over, same thing, find the corner, get it down in there, and then uh, since it's on the curve, you're going to have to come in the middle, rock it a little bit. You're basically just creating a, a, a stop cut. The only difference is with this stop cut, it's, it's curved. So then we're going to cut up to that. Go around, cut up to it. And then we're going to cut down to it. So there we go. Again, we're going to go in the corner of the mouth, put our knife in there, and then kind of scoop that wood away. Same thing on the other side. Just a little cut there, and scoop the wood away. So now he's got a bit of a smile. Now, um, with respect to the smile line here, uh, we're going to bring that up. Since he's smiling, we're going to bring that up a little bit further. You know, if you if your own face when you smile, your your smile line kind of curves a little bit more. It's on straight down, so we can kind of curve that up a little bit. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. There you go. So 
basically we just did two variations of a basic basic mouth oh wait a minute i forgot one thing um we still need to put the filter in so we're going to come in here we're going to make a little list of not a very deep line right under the nose deeper towards the uh, nostrils take your knife and then scoop one side of the wood out turn it over and pretty much do the same thing on the other side start at the bottom and then scoop a little wood out you're creating a little a little indentation in there a little bowl doesn't have to be very pronounced it can be uh, if you're going for that look you maybe want something a little bit more pronounced that's that's cool go for, go for that um, and essentially that's that's that this one's got a little bit of smile this one's well, not quite as happy um, the other thing you might want to consider doing to add uh, you know to add a little bit of a little bit more character to your your drawings or excuse me your your carvings um, is alter the eyebrows around a bit um, this guy has got more of a somber expression or at least uh, not overly happy expression so maybe his you know maybe the general line of his his eyebrows kind of just follows follows his uh, his eyes a bit so again when we do this um and this was in the last lesson so i, I probably shouldn't be going into big de detail here but you know we're going to basically form our our eyebrow around that and if you think in terms of um since these are kind of characters and they're uh, you know they can often be silly or or just entertaining to look at um think of the way cartoon figures are done most sometimes the eye itself is literally on some cartoons it's just a dot they don't even have a lot of detail you know let's stick a dot in there and that's usually sufficient they they, they develop character through expression um, both of the mouth and the and the eyebrows um so you know keep that in mind when you're doing it, it sometimes you can gain um, just the right amount of of expression by by subtle changes to this the uh, the slope of the eyebrows and the shape of the mouth um, and that's how you add interest and a slight bit of variation in your in your carvings you can carve the same figure but if you add that kind of detail um, or that or excuse me change those little things um, you'll find that uh, I'm sorry if I'm out of view um, you'll find that that kind of makes your carvings that much more interesting to look at if anybody's looking at them or like me, you know, throw them on a shelf and, and you call it good. You move on to the next one. So there you go. His, uh, his, he even looks a little bit more concerned or, or worried or, or, you know, um, <laughs> not, maybe not in the greatest uh, of, uh, of, of mood, so to speak. So uh, just again, keeping the eyebrows like that. Now, in this one over here, um, I won't. Um, I won't do the eyes. Uh, we don't. We don't have the time for that. We 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 did this in the other video. Um, but let's uh, let's um, just prep it up over here a bit. But um, if you change the eyebrow a bit, and instead of going. Uh, just straight down you maybe angle them down like this like this or up uh, that that can that can add a bit of interest as well so this one I'm gonna real quickly just shape it 
you see it's pretty much shaped similarly to the to the, the one I just did on the other side uh, until we get to removing the the center portion now we're going to basically initially do the same thing we're going to, like we did in the last video just take out that little chunk on each side and then instead of just notching off the corner we're going to bring this up a little bit further and maybe the same thing on this side So the eyebrows in the center begin to curve upward a bit. Again, you don't have to carve these. You can you can make it flat and just come back and and paint them in that way if you're uh, so inclined. But since we're whittlers and wood carvers, why not whittle it in? And there you go. Um, his eyebrows are kind of angled now, rather than curving straight around the eye, they're, they're sort of angled. Um, and it adds just enough difference. And in fact, the way I'm looking at this, you can probably get away with keeping the eyes pretty shut in here, since he's kind of laughing or smiling. Your eyes aren't as wide. Your cheeks are going to bunch up a little bit more under your eye. So you can kind of just take away a little wood inside there and give the illusion that his eyes are essentially just a bit on the closed side. Maybe put a line in here just to show it kind of bunching up a little bit. There you go. I think he's got more of a whimsical look if you look at it both from the from the side. Again, these aren't all cleaned up. Um, there's a lot of you know little irregularities and fuzzies in the wood that we're we're not concerning ourselves with right now. This is just to get to a point you can always come back. Play around to your heart's content to get all the little, you know, odd little fuzzies out. Um, I, I know some people may go back and sand over their carvings. Um, I think when I started out many years ago, uh, I, I tended to go back and run a light sandpaper over the carvings um, just to clean them up a little bit, just to smooth them out. But uh, honestly, I, I don't, I never do that anymore. Um, I, I don't like the look. I like to I like to leave some of the slight irregularities in there. Um, that's why when I paint too, I tend to paint very uh, transparent. I use mostly washes. 
um, when I used the acrylic paint, I used like a wash. Even when I was using oils, uh, it was more of a wash. I, I, even in basswood, even though it's it's not a very uh, intense green, some of it does come out. And I want it to appear like wood. I don't want it to look like a uh, plastic figure that's been painted. I want I, I want to know that it's wood. Um, and uh, I got into wood carving because I I like the feel and the um, the look of wood. Um, sometimes painting it. Um, in fact, a, a lot of my carvings I don't paint if I'm not using basswood. Especially, I don't, obviously, I don't paint them. Um, but uh, that's uh, you know something to uh, keep in mind. We want to we want to see uh, the. I mean, I, I do. Some people might want their carvings to be absolutely perfect and flawless and look like sculptured pieces. That, that, that's great. Um, there's a lot of people who are extremely talented and they do very detailed, um, beautiful uh, work uh, on their carvings. Um, I like mine to look like wood carvings. They're, you know, the, this is this is this is whittling. Um, we're having fun. We're enjoying ourselves. Uh, if we can produce little whimsical figures in the process and uh, not get hung up on on too much detail and if you want to do a piece that's got, i've done pieces that are much more detailed and much more finished uh, and i and i like doing those every so often you want to get into that but if you're just whittling and you're enjoying yourself you got one knife i mean look at these last few carvings i've used essentially the, this this one knife um and um you know you can you can you can have a lot of fun this hobby is about having fun enjoying yourself it's a very inexpensive hobby uh, to, to do. You don't make a big mess. I'm using a, a desk I covered with a piece of canvas um, and um, in, a, in a spare bedroom that we have. I was, I was using a, uh, an old, uh, a, a large storage closet initially from my older videos, but uh, I graduated up to a, to a spare bedroom that we have. And um, that's it. It's, it doesn't take a lot of, doesn't take, it's not a, it's, you don't need a lot of space. You don't need a lot of tools. Um, um, you can, you can, you can get, find a piece of wood and, and whittle away wherever you are. Um, it's, it's a fun, enjoyable, uh, relaxing hobby that, uh, pretty much anyone can do at any age. Um, I think back in the day, it was a, much more common for young people to, Pull out pocket knives, half pocket knives, and uh, and whittle. It was a, it was it was something that was passed down from generation to generation. Um, I've had some people talk to me on the in the comments about how they uh, use um, a pocket knife that their grandfather gave them. I mean that just that's great. Um, that that's that's what this is all about. It's about uh, connecting to the to the to the piece of wood. And, uh, and doing something creative. And hopefully these little tutorials that I've done um, are helpful and uh, we'll do some more, maybe work on, uh, on, on ears. Um, eventually we'll get down into the, to the body and um, hands, legs, all that kind of fun stuff in, in time. And um, you know, and we'll see where it all goes. Again, I do thank everyone for their support. I appreciate it. Um, please let me know in the comments if uh, there's something I should be doing differently, if something you like, don't like. I'm happy to uh, entertain any ideas uh, that uh, people want to throw at me. And uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. Uh, thank you again for, for watching. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.